Coach, uh, you're back after what some might term maybe the biggest win in, in school history. Uh, I mean, everybody has their own levels of what the biggest win is. But for you, certainly uh, one of the, the biggest in your EMU career already. Well, in terms of in terms of history, <clears throat> it's it's hard to argue that in terms of you know finding out from you earlier last week that <clears throat> we'd never beaten a Power Five team in the 126 years, um, and that we were 0 and 58. As you know, I couldn't keep that from the team, um, you know, and and because uh, it was just such a, a crazy statistic, um, and and so you know to go and and, and to beat them and. Uh, to get that, um, you know, you do. You feel a sense of you've done something historic, if you will, at least for our program. And so there's uh, there's some pride and, and um, some feel good to that for sure. You you look back at, at the the final moments. Uh, I mean, it in true Eastern Michigan fashion, it goes right to the end. I mean, you look at your last over the last year plus, you've had seven games that are decided by seven points or less and Eastern just kind of finds a way to grit it out at the end. Yeah, it was uh, <clears throat> maybe closer than it needed to be in terms of the very end. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is uh, becoming, you know, one of our, our characteristics, you know, is that we will, we will believe and, and, and fight to the end. Um, and so th this was, this was crazy because the scoreboard said zero, 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 um, and we still hadn't won. Um, so, you know, they reviewed the final play and, and kind of uh, squelched our initial uh, reaction and celebration, and then, um, you know, and then, and then we won. So it was good. Uh, you, you look back at, at your defensive effort. I mean, it, at one stretch, you, you held Rutgers without a first down on seven consecutive drives. One of those was a turnover. The rest were all three and outs. 42% uh, of your drives this year on defense have resulted in three and outs. I'm not sure that's ever been done in EMU history. Our defense was, was fantastic on Saturday. Um, and I think so much of the game was, was the second quarter. Um, and when I just think about what our plan was and what we anticipated Rutgers plan on being, you know, the second quarter was such a fight. Um, in the second quarter alone, and that's when we didn't have the wind, and I think it ended up being about an hour long. The first quarter was a snap of a finger. Um, our defense had five three and outs, stopped two sudden changes, and intercepted um, the ball. Awesome, you know, and and then we were able to to kick a field goal there, you know, at the the very last play of, of the half, and so um, ju yeah, the defense just had a phenomenal plan, and the guys executed it, and they did it, you know, all game long. Um, so it was uh, definitely the story of the day. Uh, you haven't heard yet, but I just did get the email, uh, Jeremiah Harris. West Division Player of the Week, um, a huge thing for him, and he does get a pick. He forces uh, the sack at the end of the game, and uh, between the bookends of him and Max, what a, what a performance they both had. Right, and you throw in, <clears throat> you know, Luke McLean into that mix too, and um, yeah, uh, you know, Jeremiah Harris was voted captain. You know, still has another year left, um, and he's he's a winner. You know, on and off the field, um, he, he's a winner. I, I don't know how else to d describe him. And there's lots of ways to describe him. But, you know, and, and winners believe. Winners, you know, can see things happen before they happen. Uh, winners make plays, uh, especially in big games and crucial moments and whatnot. And um, Jeremiah had a, had a fantastic game and is doing a great job leading our team. And, um, um, I mean, there, uh, there's a lot of great defensive performances and whatnot, but uh, he's, you know, he earned, he earned it. He, it's a great job. I don't think people realize that, that Jeremiah is maybe a little more mature than a lot of, uh, you look at him after his freshman year, the guy gets married. I mean, not too often are you seeing 
people thinking of that far ahead and getting their life in order, and he's just got a plan and, and goes with it. Yeah, I, I have the utmost respect for, for Jeremiah Harris. Offensively, it wasn't the, the best day on offense. I mean, there were, were drops, and, and I know there were penalties that you wanted, but it was good enough to, to get the win. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting because there's lots of different ways of looking at it. We, we had nine penalties again, you know, so uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the offense here in a second. But, you know, like I said, it was, it was a great historic win for us. But I, I think one of my biggest takeaways on Saturday was our post-game locker room. Um, there was hugs and smiles, high fives for sure, sung the, the school fight song, but it was not – it was just not like utter craziness. It just wasn't. Um, and I think there's a couple different reasons for that. But I, the thing that I take away from that is that our, our team knows that, you know, we ground out that game and, and, you know, there was toughness and grit and plays were made. Um, but our, our best football, that was not our best football. And, and our guys know that. It's not coach talk. I mean, our, our best football um, it, it is ahead of us, and our, our guys know that. And so, um, so don't take me wrong. I mean, we played really hard, and we're very thankful that we were able to pull that off. But it wasn't just the height of we can't do any better than this, and we just did something, you know, crazy special, and now it's all over. I mean, that can't be our our finest moment this year. Um, I mean, that would be really, really, really sad. Um, although it was a great moment. Um, and so, you know, with that offensively, and it wasn't the, all the penalties weren't on offense. I mean, that was through offense, defense, and special teams. But we had some some drive killers um, uh, with penalties, and we had some 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 drop balls um, at inopportune times. And you know, in terms of just execution, just you know, not perfect. Um, now, I will say the way we started the game was really strong. Right. I mean, deferred, <clears throat> um, and. Uh, you know, we were able to go right down the field and um, uh, and score. Um, it was really, really, really good. And um, you know, like I said, uh, we scored right there at the end of the half, which is a huge field goal. Um, and so we we did some we did some good things, but um, we just we just know that we can be better um, in that area. And I think it gets into the special teams as well. You know, we we had. Uh, a ton of respect for their jersey number one, their returner, also played wide receiver. I always think he's phenomenal with the ball in his hands. And so we really had a plan to try to keep the ball out of his hands. And, you know, he, he had some courage. There were some times where I think a lot of people would let that ball die on rugby kicks and, you know, in a lot of crowded areas and whatnot. But uh, he was very aggressive, um, but did a good job of, t you know, taking care of the ball when he had it. And, and they just, they, they beat us in that area of the game. You know, we wanted to keep it away from them, and we really couldn't. Uh, both in the kick and the punt, um, and he was able to get one of our pooches that we were trying to keep away from him as well. And so, again, we just we th we think we can do better um, uh, than we did. And um, I think again, one of the great things about our team is that we don't we don't have to convince them of that. I mean, our guys are hungry to get better. Um, and we all are. And, and so it's a good week for a bye to, to be able to get back to some fundamentals and basics and, and then uh, start to get ready for a, an awesome Ohio team you know, next week. Yeah, you mentioned the bye. I mean, it, in a way, it, you would like to continue the momentum because you just won. But in a way, it's also good because it gives you a chance to, to regroup to some degree, doesn't it? It does. I mean, you know, whenever they tell you there's a bye, then that's what your bye is. And so you better attack it and make the you know, make the most out of it. And so, yeah, we're going to have some guys that are going to get to heal up. It's really the first full week of school. And, and so great opportunity really just to dive in and get off to a great start that way. Um, you know, and for our coaches to be out on the road uh, and to be able to do some recruiting. Um, and then again, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit different in that we've got these two non-conference games and then a huge MAC football game um, coming up, and then we have two more non-conference games, um, you know, later after that, and so, um, and it's you know a team that played for the MAC championship last year, so um, plenty of work 
uh, to do in preparation for that, and so we'll use our time wisely. One of the, the things that to offensively people will take notice of is from once you've kind of got in the red zone, you haven't been able to find the end zone as much as you'd like. You've had to rely on, on Polly. How do you try to, to maybe try to get six a little bit more than the three? Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we're going to look at that um, and, and evaluate that. Um, we, we feel as though we've had, um, you know, good plans. Um, uh, I think in, in both of the two games, you always want touchdowns, but there's also points where um, you don't want to be too aggressive. Um, you know, when, when you know that you have three um, and, and points are hard to come by in a low scoring game, you want to make sure you're taking care of the ball. Um, so that is not an excuse, but the, you know, when we're up against Charlotte, um, of course we wanted to continue to score points, but you know, we, we ended up, by my direction, you know, we're conservative in that fourth quarter. Um, we wanted to win the football game, you know, and then uh, in this game too, you know, we did turn it over once, um, and that's one too many. But uh, for the most part, we did a pretty good job of taking care of the ball, and then, um, you know, we, we, took our, we took our three, and we, we want seven, and again, we'll evaluate that and, and, and keep getting better at it. But uh, um, some of it was just, I think, the nature of how the game's played out. Uh, EMU has not started 3-0 since 1989. Jim Harkema was the last coach to do so. You, he's a Hall of Famer, a guy on the other opposing sideline uh, in a week plus is an eventual Hall of Famer, Frank Solich. Uh, they've got a, a huge game coming up against Kansas. Is that a, a unique aspect for them to, they've got a power five school still to go and you get the luxury of sitting around and regrouping for a week? Yeah, I, I think it can work both ways. You know, if they had a bye this week and, and we were playing Kansas, then it would be an advantage for us. <laughs> and if we have the bye and they're playing Kansas, then I'm going to say it's an advantage for us. So yeah. it's, it, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. They beat Kansas last year, and now they're hosting them. I mean, so it's going to be a, a really, a, you know, a fun game to watch. Um, but I haven't talked to this, you know, to our team yet and all that. But, there, you know, obviously this last week there's been so much talk about the uh, Power Five and all that. The Ohio Bobcats are a great program. And um, I haven't been able to watch them much yet, but I know are a great team. And so, you know, whether there's a power word before mm -hmm. the five or a group or whatever, the, the program and the team that we're going to be facing coming up is going to be a huge challenge. And everybody in our program is well aware of it. Last year you went to Ohio, got to, to celebrate in their locker room. I mean, the, it, there haven't been a whole lot of EMU victories all time in Athens, but now they come up here and how, I, I know you're still early in the game plan, but how do you try to, to keep the game plan similar? Because you know Eastern's going to keep it close, Ohio's going to try to run the ball, keep it close. How do you, do you work that chess match? Yeah, we haven't put all that together yet. I'll, I can just tell you from, from last year's game, we knew that if we were going to have a chance to be able to compete with Ohio, that we had to play smart, which we haven't always done. We had to play discipline, which we haven't always done, to be in incredibly tough mentally and physically, um, and then to win special teams and turnovers. That 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 was Ohio football. And, and so I don't know if I can give a program a bigger compliment than that. I mean, that is, that is how I, I see their program and how our program views their program. And so we needed to sort of become all the things that they already were in order to have a chance. And again, we weren't perfect in that game, but we, I felt as though we came out of that and we were disciplined, we were tough, we were smart. And, and we did take seriously the, you know, the turnovers and takeaways in the special teams. And we were able to, you know, to eke it out. Um, they've been doing it that way for years. Uh, and, and so, you know, we haven't gotten into the plan and all that. But I do know that if we're not all of that, then, then in, we're not, not going to win.